Hey everybody, we are back in Albert Lee, Minnesota, and I had the opportunity to work with Andrew Jenks, also known as Andy. He is a drone flyer, but he's also a researcher at U of M. He is going to show us the entire process of using a drone to 3D and 2D map a field or the ditch that we're working with today. First, we're going to be talking to Andy, and he's going to explain some of the more finite details of what's going on with the drone and how to use it. And then we're going to be showing you guys what came of the drone mapping. I'm going to show you guys the 3D and the 2D images that were created. Uh, my name is Andy Jenks, and I'm from the Department of Forest Resources at the University of Minnesota in the College of Food, Agriculture, and Natural Resource Sciences. And we're here doing a field survey of a sod farm. And what we're trying to do is to uh, use remote sensing to create a, um, a very detailed view of the landscape, both uh, the plant matter as well as the ditches and some of the information about the elevation as much as we can from our photogrammetric process. And we're operating a drone. Uh, it's a drone from a company called DJI. It's a Chinese company and it's the largest drone manufacturer. And it's operating, we're operating a Mavic 2 is our drone. And we're operating that over these 480 acres of this sod farm. And what we do is we fly the drone over at approximately 400 feet taking pictures. And we'll uh, end up with about 1,200 pictures uh, taken from 400 feet. And we'll use software then to stitch them together to create a photo mosaic of the landscape that we can use to determine where the plants are, where the roads are, where the objects are in the landscape. And that mosaic allows us to understand the horizontal position, the X and the Y. Then we'll use the, um, uh, the, the photo mosaic process to help us also create a digital uh, surface model uh, and that would be using the pictures to make a 3D representation of the landscape and that 3D representation would once we adjust it to the true location the true surveyed location would give us a real idea of the slope of the landscape or the slope of the ditch uh, and the various changes in elevation on the landscape so it's uh, an interesting process, a combination of drone uh, imagery and special photogrammetric process that we do on the web and we also have a version we do on our computers where we match all the pictures together and create the, the 3D representation, the point cloud if you will. And it's very different than just matching pictures together like you would matching picture of your cat to, a, you know, to another picture nearby like people doing a uh, panorama. Uh, this is actually decomposing the picture into its dots and getting all the dots into the correct three-dimensional space and then recomposing that image. So it's um, uh, an interesting uh, software process that handles the drone imagery. And the drone itself is flown from a program that we program ahead of time and we set the drone up and, uh, and in a pre-programmed fashion to fly back and forth collecting these overlapping pictures and we're collecting pictures that overlap on the sides of each picture and the end of each picture. And then from that, those overlapping pictures, we're able to match the pictures, the same point in this picture is the same point in that picture, and we're able to map uh, that location of that, the picture in three-dimensional space that allows our photogrammetric process to, to uh, create the final surfaces. And we've got another team out right now doing GPS, collecting GPS, so that we can improve the horizontal accuracy of our process. The GPS, the drone has GPS in it, and when the process is done from the drone processing, it's about a meter uh, accurate, uh, east-west, north-south. And uh, we're going to, with our GPS, our ground uh, control, we'll be able to move it into a few centimeters uh, of accuracy uh, horizontally. Then we've got to uh, also uh, adjust our vertical, uh, and we use the, the statewide LIDAR that was uh, uh, taken uh, seven or eight years ago. To, uh, and in that case, we actually have to see objects, large objects in the landscape that were there six or seven years ago, and that would be like the tops of the culverts, or, or the, you know, things that we can really clearly see and get a good elevation from the LIDAR and match it up to our, our photogrammetric surface.
the 3D images will, will allow the, the engineers to better, because the, the landscape will be modeled in three dimensions, they'll be able to take more detailed measurements and, and make the plans for their expansion of the ditch. Uh, uh, wind and rain and, and environmental conditions, because it, it works great. This is wide open, there's plenty of space, no wires, no anything uh, to bump into. So it's uh, very clear, very easy to operate over, uh, but the weather is the issue. Uh, the wind uh, slows the drone down, uh, chews up more battery, as well as the rain, which we can't operate in. And the sun actually is, is also our enemy because it creates shadows. And shadows goof up our process, uh, and that we really like these heavily overcast days, bright overcast days where there's very few shadows that are picked up in the in the images. So uh, a bright overcast day with no rain and no wind is our is our perfect. Uh, whereas that's not true with the satellite imagery. They want cloud-free days. Do you know what I mean? Bright cloud-free days because they're shooting down from space. We're down below the clouds. So I could just show you guys something absolutely like seriously geeky cool. Here is the 2D map. Now this entire website is called dronedeploy.com. It's what stitches together all those 12,000 different images. Now this light part right here, that's the main ditch that we're looking at. Now we can zoom in. This thing is like insanely detailed. You can even see the tire tracks from the last time they sprayed the fields with a tractor. You can zoom in, you can move around. We can even see individual pumps as they're pumping the water out, which again, to me, pretty geeky cool. Now here's the plant health map. It's going to show us all the different amounts of plant matter. Now if you look over here, we can see these scales. It tells you what the different colors stand for. We have the elevation maps. This is going to help the engineers decide how deep the drain or the uh, two-stage ditch is going to be again scale over here now the 3d model is probably the one that the engineers are going to be using the most of we can look at it from above we can look at it from underneath just in case you want to look under the ditch for some reason now we can zoom in Again, amazing amount of detail, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how much detail this is. We can zoom in and be inside of the ditch itself. So we can even walk around in the ditch if we wanted to. We can move around, we can again see the different, the different pumps as they pump. So you can see the water coming out here. We can see a tractor that's been sitting there for a while. So this is the one where they will actually manipulate more so to try to engineer the next, the two-stage ditch that they're going to be creating. Now if this is what drones can do now, I can only imagine what they're going to be doing in the future.